Hello everyone, it's Carrie. I'm sorry I was gone for a while, but I'm back with a very special video. My patrons on Patreon and I decided to get together to do another collaboration. So this time we voted on the theme uh, and came up with 1920, since this is the year 2020. We thought 100 years ago, uh, styles from that time would be awesome to remake into dolls. So we had a wide variety of interpretations of 1920s. So I'm excited for you to get to the end of the video so you can see all of the individual photos of all of the dolls that those who participated created. We had a lot of fun. So check that out. And also the link to my Patreon is below if you're interested in seeing what's offered there. So the character that I chose was Nosferatu. I decided to do a female version with just, you know, I always like to do a twist on things. And I've kind of always wanted to do a little vampire girl in a little coffin. So this kind of just helped me bring my vision to life. And so I started out with a Madeline Hatter ever after High Doll. And I did a lot of carving and sanding to get the face shape where I wanted it and then uh, carving out some little teeth. So using some sandpaper and also a Dremel just kind of being cautious and slow to make sure I wasn't going through too far on the vinyl. The chins of these dolls are typically pretty thick so that you can go down kind of far, and um, but you have to be careful that you don't pop a, through, a hole through the vinyl. This is sped up quite a bit and the, the full process of carving down the teeth and the chin uh, took a couple of days, uh, several hours to complete. Once I sanded it down to where I wanted it and the shape I wanted it, then I used a, a variety of sandpapers to get out the lines and sand it down a little bit smoothly. So I had to use some high grain papers for the end process. I also use a nail file here and there to get into some of those small crev crevices. Also used a number of different bits in my Dremel. And then I also used a, an, an electric nail file with a couple of different bits on that as well. Just trying a bunch of different things and uh, a combination of everything. So I wanted to stay true to the scalp of the, the Nosferatu and make sure that I had her bald. Uh, I wanted to give her hair. It was really hard for me not to, but I thought, well, let me just give it a shot. So I used some epoxy. I'm sorry, not epoxy, but uh, I, I wanted to use a color that was matching closer to the skin tone. So I used... Uh, what is that kind of clay called? <laughs> like I'm, I'm losing my thoughts, but, um, the clay is the bake baking clay. So in or so I, I didn't want to stick the head in the, of course, because it would cook the vinyl. And, uh, so what I used is a, once I sculpted it, I used a, <clears throat> excuse me, a, um, heating tool like it blows hot air. It's kind of like a hairdryer, but a lot hotter. So you've got to be cautious with it. But I used that to heat it up and just did it in short bursts for a very long time, making sure that it was cooked all the way through. Luckily, it was pretty thin clay, so it didn't, um, it, it didn't take a long time, but 
uh, just very short bursts and just made sure that I got it cooked very, very well. Trying to keep it moving around so it stays hot, but also that I don't like burn any surface area. And the clay that I used, I'm sorry, it's polymer clay, the Sculpey brand, and it's called Living Doll, so it kind of is a, a doll or a, a light, lighter skin tone. And I apologize, I'm not able to um, think very clearly. I'm getting over being sick, and so I can't remember some of these things. <laughs> and there I'm using the electric nail file. This is good to use when I don't want the kind of harshness of the Dremel that can those that can rotate very quickly and can if you're not cautious it can damage what you've done. So if I want a lighter sanding in the smaller areas, then I'll use this tool. I also use liquid Sculpey to blend it into the to the vinyl a little bit better. There were were still some lines that I wasn't able to really sand out like I would have liked, but I was able to disguise those with the paint job or the pastels and different colors of uh, pan pastel that I add later. For the costume, I didn't go into too much detail on how I cr created the costume because it did take several hours, but uh, I used some of my stock of beautiful laces and little bits of fabric pieces to do my tattered fairy style look. And I made like, I added some little uh, sort of like vampire symbols, a little bit of witchcraft in there too, just to make it fun. Uh, but some of those symbols are like ancient vampire symbols I thought would be fun to add. And then I stitched them all up into the skirt and then added a snap to the back. So that was the skirt and the uh, blouse that I made was kind of, uh, it was from a pull-up doll and I kind of reconstructed it. So I wanted my coffin, so I had this, it's sort of like a paper mache that I purchased at a craft store and painted it black. And then I added these stickers because I wanted sort of a raised embellishment. And so I added the stickers on and then painted it over those and then added some uh, like wax, gold wax to kind of make it look like it was a raised embellishment. I also added like a satin for the inside and paper detail to the inside of the top of the coffin and some lace and some embellishments on the top. I also made that little pillow with lace around it for the inside. So onto the face up. Even though I used the clay on the top, I still gave her several coats of Mr. Super Clear to start. And started with the eyes as usual. I wanted her to have sort of a surprised, big-eyed look, like most of my dolls have the big eyes, and I wanted those big round eyes for this character. using my typical process to build the tear duct and the water line. And if you're a supporter over on Patreon in the library of rewards, there's a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I do my water line and uh, tear duct. 
along with several other rewards, so check that out. The link is in the description box below. So I wanted a really pale skin look. To start, I decided to blend everything together with a white base. I'm using Pan Pastels. And once again, make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video so you can see the final photos of this character as well as individual photos of everyone who participated in the collab. We had so much fun. It turned out so beautiful and interesting. I'm just so proud that everybody did so well. So carrying that white all over, I did this a few times. I added Mr. Super Clear and then like two or three coats, and then I'd go back and do another layer. Here I'm adding some peach colors and just blending those around. And then I'll start to add different colors that are in typical skin tones like uh, yellows and blues and magenta. And I'm using an eye, eyeshadow brush. Thank you to uh, one of my patrons, um, Mare, for <laughs> sending this to me. That was such a sweet gift. Thank you so much. Along with some other things. It was very kind of you. Thank you. But this is a, like a makeup brush, an eyeshadow brush that is good for just adding blush and light colors. So I'm adding some of this. It's sort of like a golden yellow around the eyes and a little bit in the scalp and nose. And so I'm adding a couple different peach colors and also adding, I think I'm putting on some dots of magenta and just kind of trying to blend that scalp in with the face is the whole uh, purpose of this. And also to give it kind of a creepy, uh, almost transparent like skin tone where you can kind of see the veins through. So just carrying those colors throughout really helps with that. See, you can start to see it look kind of like a creepy looking skin. It's almost uh, kind of gross. So I'm just doing some shading in the mouth area using those same colors. Really I carried out through the like golden yellow, uh, sort of a turquoise blue and magenta and the peaches and whites and I think another blue. Just carried those little, those colors all throughout the head. So I'm working on the teeth. I wanted them to be white, but not like super standout white. And then adding some darker reds underneath the lip.
So by this point I started to add a little bit more magenta to as sort of a base for the veins that I'll be adding. So you can see those shapes in the scalp. Doing some shading behind the teeth to help them stand out a little bit more. I decided to go to, with a sort of a gray eye, darker on the outside, the outer ring, ring, and then lighter towards the inside. Doing a lot of blending here because I really want that inner eye to be nice and light. So I'm blending it out with some white. Then I'm adding sort of a hint of red that will be behind the pupil. I'm kind of peeking out from it. Layering in some more colors around the scalp. And kind of toning down a little bit that magenta using some peach and white. almost went without eyebrows just because I thought she looked so creepy here without them but I in the end I decided to give her eyebrows because I wanted it a little bit more on the cute side um, she is very creepy and weird looking I know but then I in the end I thought she turned out cute just like I wanted her to to some she'll be cute to others she'll be gross <laughs> Thank you. 
So to all my patrons who participated in this, I just want to say thank you so much for joining in the fun. I'm so glad that we were able to do this and we'll be voting on the next collab soon. So stay tuned for that and let me know if you have any ideas for a theme. That would be fun if we all gave some theme ideas and then we voted on them. So looking forward to that and then make sure, again, make sure that you stay tuned to the end of this video and see each of the dolls that were completed by the patrons and then also make sure to follow them on social media. I've included their uh, social Instagram names and Twitter names on there. So make sure to follow them and check out their work because they've been doing some really beautiful dolls. So adding in the eyebrows, I'm starting with a base of like a grayish black. I mixed a black and gray to make this lighter shade. And then I go back in and add the individual hairs, hair lines. So once again, I'm so sorry I have been away for a while, but I am back and have some fun videos in store. So stay tuned, make sure that you're subscribed and hit the notification bell. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.